Hi everyone, I'm America Josh. Welcome to Regular Checkups, my weekly summary of the news for expats in the United States. Every week, we've got different panelists who can answer questions about their industries, tell you what they see day to day and make some recommendations for your future as expats living in the United States. These aren't going to be deep dives, but each week we'll answer as many questions as we can that have been submitted and hopefully give you some comfort knowing that you've got all the information you need at your fingertips. That leads me to introduce my panel for tonight. I want to thank these three very much for taking their time out. We've got Renee Diaco Giorgio, so close, a Senior Associate Financial Services, People and Organization Practice at PwC. We've got Dan Rosenzweig, the co-founder and of co-working space Kettle Space Incorporated, and Amy Meyer, the founder of Aussie Recruit and Australians in the San Francisco Bay Area on Facebook. Thank you very much, all of you, for joining me tonight. We divide every week into three sections, past, present, and future. Past, we're going to hear about how our panelists have gotten here tonight and how their industries have gone over the last few months. Present, we're going to talk about what our panelists are up to now and what they're seeing in their industries at the moment and answer your questions. Then future, we're gonna talk about recommendations and ideas that they've got for you and sort of see how things are changing in the future. Before we get to any information though, we do need to flag that this webinar is strictly for informational purposes only, and it is not intended, nor should it be relied upon as a source of legal or financial advice or opinion. As always, it's important to let you all know that because everyone's situation is different and not everything we say tonight will apply to you. So now with all the formalities out of the way, Renee, I'll uh, start with you. Hello. If you don't mind introducing yourself, give me us a little bit of a, a background about how you got here tonight. Sure. Hi. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name's Renee, as Josh said. Uh, I work for PwC uh, in the people and people and organisation culture practice. I've been in HR for around about 10 years now. Um, in Australia, I used to work for Westpac Bank and I'm from Adelaide. So I worked from, for SA Water. And I've been uh, in New York now for just over four years. So I used to work uh, on Wall Street, for Deutsche Bank doing HR, and I've been with PwC now for two years, moved into consulting. In terms of, yeah, so how I got here, that, that's, that, that's how we are. <laughs> that's a story. That yeah. right now. Yeah. I about that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, so t tell us a little bit about like what your, what your office and what your role looks like and what's it look like over the past few months? Sure. So as a consultant, I mean, I'm based here in New York, but I'm often on site at client site. Con the consultant is usually a traveling role. So we're on client site almost every week, depending on, on where the client is based and depending on how long the project is there. At the moment, my client is in Houston. So up until a few months ago, I was flying to Houston almost weekly and I was in Houston Monday to Thursday every week, serving my clients, giving them the, doing the project with them on, on, on site there. That has since changed. We are all remote now, including our client. Obviously, everyone's been working from home. But yeah, so yeah, yeah right. we're definitely shifting. Yeah. So how does that change your role as someone sort of in the people services? You know, I imagine you have a lot of face-to-face -face time and it's all about sort of engaging the, the community and culture of a business. How sort of has that changed your job? Okay. Yeah, so look, our job, we've sort of shifted the trajectory in terms of the services where we're getting, we're getting asked to provide. So obviously, we still provide our regular services, which is a lot of things around change management. It's sort of like our bread and butter. We have a lot of things to do with organizational redesign, things like that. But right now, the key people problem or like change in the work in the work world that's happening is how do we get um, our people to be productive and happy and healthy while working remotely? And then eventually, what's our plan for return to work? So there's been a, a bit of a shift in that and trying to, I mean, where the, the problem, not, I won't say the problem, but the challenge <laughs> there is we're learning as we go as well. And we're having to advise our clients on how to do it right. So we've been practicing a few things within our own team. Um, we're over communicating. Like we have, we have a lot of social hours. We have um, some competitions to keep us engaged, like a doodling challenge that we do within our team. Just anything that we can do to try, try to keep us connected that we can then pass on that advice to our clients, I think is, is helpful and it seems to be working. But in terms of the, what the future return to work looks like, that's where we're starting to build out what, what we think it's going to. Yeah. Okay. And that's the sort of evolving one. Yeah. Amy, 
Thank you as well for joining me tonight. Is that similar to what you're seeing with businesses that you work with and the, and the people that you're talking to? Yeah, thanks for having me, Josh. Big fan of these. <laughs> Joined your past two, so grateful to be on this tonight. My situation's a little interesting because I've been working with companies as essentially a third-party recruiter. So they would look at me as kind of a recruiting agency, but I see it more as a recruitment community that is around, the, around Australians. I've definitely seen a big impact in how the companies I'm working with are hiring uh, and how they are working together. And a lot of that is either a slowing or a pause. So a lot of them, I think, are taking this view of let's wait and see. And as we do currently speak and interview with potential candidates, let's slow down that process so that we can still wait and see. Or otherwise, there's just kind of been a big pause on a lot of their, their internal hiring initiatives. And I've been quite interested to further explore, and it's something I'm, I'm more interested in doing more research on, on how this whole working remote has actually been impacting recruitment and the internal hiring processes. Because a lot of the companies, at least out here in the Bay Area, and I'd imagine also in New York, there's a lot of face-to-face -face that occurs as part of these hiring processes. And so I'm quite interested to see over time, over the next couple of months, throughout the rest of the year, how these things are impacted, along with you know, a lot of the other internal processes, whether it be employee engagement and having the, the doodle competitions or all sorts of things to keep people engaged. For sure. Can you tell us just a little bit, so Aussie Recruit, just to give us a little bit of a background about, you know, I, we've obviously hosted, uh, well not obviously, we've hosted some uh, webinars together before and, and done some things and we've talked about our communities on each of the coasts. But do you mind giving everyone just a little bit of a background on sort of how you've gotten to, to where you are today? Sure. Thanks, Josh. So I moved to San Francisco from Sydney about seven years ago. I kept saying six years until yesterday. <laughs> and I was like, at some point wow. you have to switch to the next year. Did we, can, I need you back. Oh, sorry, yeah, That's sorry, right. I just got disconnected for a second. Um, okay. Yeah, if I have that issue again, I might just need to switch um, to a tethering. Yes, yeah, so when I moved here, I started an Australians in San Francisco Facebook group because I didn't have any friends or family or support network here. And for a couple of years, it was kind of just me, one or two other friends. But then it started really building momentum. And, you know, fast forward to last year, there's thousands of members. There's this really big expat community here. And I wanted to do something that was really meaningful and significant, both for me in my career, but also Australians out here. And I found from meeting, you know, over 100 Australians one-on-one, -on -one, that there was this really big issue with Australian professionals getting jobs out here. And I was just blown away. I was like, this is crazy. You're all super overqualified, have moved countries. You know, some of you are still... Oh, I might have to uh, jump to you, Dan. Uh, hello. Oh, sorry, Amy. Well, we lost you a little bit. So I'll quickly jump to Dan. I met you, Dan, as a, a brand new arrival in New York myself. And I joined Kettle Space, the co-working space that you co-founded. I imagine you know, being a real estate and physically oriented business that, you know, your, your life has changed and your business has changed a fair bit over the last few months. Certainly has. First off, thanks for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Yeah. So for us, we offer co-working space. It's uh, certainly unique. We partner with restaurants, hotels, retail spaces that are generally underutilized and help bring easy revenue to, to those operators. And at the same time, on the other side of that, deliver the world's most affordable co-working product. So our members get access to all of the spaces that, that we partner with, which was 17 as of, I guess, nine weeks ago. Um, <laughs> hard to believe that it's been that long. So yeah, I, I, it's been tough. We offer people space and we currently can't do that. So we paused our entire community's memberships. So we obviously, from a business standpoint, in theory, it people might frown upon that. We did it because we knew it was the right move. And we got over time, we got our investors behind us knowing that this isn't, we're not here for to be a, you know, a, I don't know, a, something, we're not here for the short term, we're here for the long term. And so we had to do do right by, by folks um, as best we could. 
No, and I think it's important. We're seeing that in a lot of these catch-ups we're hearing from businesses saying, you know, it's better about, and sort of why I wanted to bring you three together. It's about the people, it's about the, the parts of the business that are important and the community members to make sure you take care of them in the short term so that long term you actually have, you know, business prospects. And Completely. So do you mind telling us a little bit of a background? You know, that's Kettle Space. What's, uh, what's your, how did you get, get here and, and, and how did I get into Kettle here? Space? Yeah. So, yeah. so always been in real estate. Right out of school, I started uh, working for an, a consulting firm called Alvarez and Marsal, which primarily focuses on bankruptcy and restructuring work. But we worked with the Bloomberg administration to help assess New York's ability to attract uh, entrepreneurs, which is, which is pretty cool. That was my first uh, dipping my toe into the entrepreneurial um, world. <laughs> And then from there, I actually went to work for WeWork on the real estate team. So I was one of the first hires there, helped them grow from a few locations to several hundred. And through that experience, came up with the idea for Kettle Space and sort of seeing how the market dynamics were playing out. And also just through my own experience, seeing a lot of underutilized space that was beautiful and checked a lot of the boxes of what we were looking to create. And I thought this might be a more efficient and potentially smarter way to do it. For sure. And so with everything that's happened, you know, you've said that you've put everyone on pause and you've changed the sort of the business dynamic a fair bit or completely. What, what's sort of, what's it looking like now? What are you, how are you engaging with your community and, and how are they responding? What are they asking for? Completely. So it's, it's a, honestly, it's a lot of this, right? I don't, I know I'm probably not alone in saying I, I sit, I've always sat in front of a computer, <laughs> but the camera's on more than it ever has been. We called every single one of our members and asked them first and foremost, how are you? Are you okay? From Because health is wealth. We all know that, I guess now more than ever. But then how can we help? What, in what way, what are, what's ailing you most other than if it's health? And a lot of folks were saying, you know, a lot of our community is made up of, of freelancers and consultants. And they were saying, uh, my pipeline has dried up and the scope of work of what I'm focused on right now for a lot of my existing clients has, has, has been reduced. So we immediately went to work on different ways that we could bring more, more revenue to our, our user base. And so we created an offer ask system where members who are working on certain projects and have needs, if I'm a web developer and I need someone to help me with copywriting or marketing or something like that, they can post that ask. And we have a pretty talented community and folks are very, very eager to help one another. So we've really been focused on helping people make more money. And then on the flip side, we've gone out and negotiated with, I want to say over a hundred um, different company services businesses that were in, in the stacks or in the tech, tech stacks of, of the businesses. Yep that work in our community. And we've amassed over half a million dollars in savings for, for those folks. So $20,000 in Stripe credit, $5,000 in AWS credits, uh, you name it, we've probably got <laughs> we it. Made that call. You, <laughs> you can request it. Yeah, awesome. So just out of interest, how does it work with, you know, there are obviously some other, you know, it's no big secret to uh, say there are other co-working spaces. Is that something that you have a community with? Like, do you speak to other leaders in the, the co-working space yeah. and workplace space? Or is that... Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're all in this together at the end of the day. I mean, we are, we're a prop tech company, but we we're in real estate. So I try and stay in touch with folks from all over the uh, real estate ecosystem. You know, we're what I'd call asset agnostic. We go in retail spaces, we go in hotels, we go in restaurants, um, multi multifamily properties. So I've been talking to brokers and owners in all of those different areas and hearing if you, if you'd like to hear, I'm happy to share some of the feedback I've been getting, which is, a lot of slowdown and pausing right now, similar to what, you know, a lot of the comments we've, we've heard thus far, because no one really knows. The key is the timeline is, is somewhat unknown right now. We're starting to see some best practices come out though. So for example, McDonald's just came out with their reopening policies. A lot of focus around social distancing, sanitation, and really focusing on making sure that people who are on site are going to leave as they came, which is hopefully healthy. No, awesome. I mean, it's good. At least something good can come out of uh, a whole bunch of people being locked down and having some time to think. Amy, I'll jump back to you. So you were just saying, so you've got, started sort of thinking about this idea that Australians don't have the opportunity to properly advertise themselves, basically. I'll, I'll throw it back to you. And you were sort of in the early stages of Aussie Recruit. And Thank you. Starting I appreciate that, Josh. Sorry about that. And Not Dan, it sounds like you're doing some really amazing work and saving those businesses a lot of money. So um, <laughs> that's really awesome. Just running my own uh, small business, I, I know how much those cost savings can really mean during a time like this. It's a great work. 
Yeah, so I realized that Australians just weren't really getting a fair opportunity throughout hiring processes because of that little box that we need to tick about needing sponsorship. And so that's really how Aussie Recruit came into formation. And I essentially just started meeting with more and more companies and pitching Australian talent. That evolved into monthly meetups for the Australian community out here, looking at job seekers essentially attending these meetups to expand their own professional networks because that's really my number one piece of advice to anyone both pre-coronavirus and also now is expanding your professional network is always going to be key to landing those new jobs so i was thinking how can i help all of these people to help each other but also to meet with the companies that i'm recruiting for face-to-face instead of through a resume. And that's what's going to be really interesting now, as I was mentioning earlier on, as hiring processes start to change, as we rely more on video conferencing, it can be really difficult to have those face-to-face interactions and to you know, just f- see how you feel in the work environment or see how you kind of get along with certain people. Uh, that will be really interesting to see to see how that changes over time because we're going to have to rely on that more and more. For sure. Renee, is that sort of the same for you for what you're seeing? You know, it, it really is educating people on how that they how they can engage with community and what they can do moving forward. And what are what are people asking you? What are the questions that you're seeing sort of yeah. coming to? Yeah, Josh, that's a great question. And um, Amy, hearing what you do, you you would have been so helpful to have someone (laughs) when I first moved to New York, let me tell you, because that's truly the purpose of your business. So you can speak to as many recruiters as you want, but having so having an Aussie to uh, sort of go in and back for you is a is a great thing yeah so some of the questions we're getting are definitely around how to keep people engaged how what things are going to look like moving forward how can we keep how can we offer people balance so does everyone have to come into back into the office so I know Twitter yesterday announced that if you don't want to go back to the office you never have to ever <laughs> We'll see, who we, we'll see who follows next. I imagine it'll be a lot of the big tech companies might, might follow suit. The other things we're hearing are really around wellness. So how can I make sure my people are not just healthy, but also mentally healthy, emotionally healthy? Like this has been such a huge challenge for everyone. And as humans, we're social people, right? We depend, we rely on community. We rely on social interaction. A lot of people that live on their own haven't even like, had physical touch with someone in, you know, now we're going on 10 weeks now and you just don't realize the toll that takes on someone emotionally and psychologically, especially when day to day, they're probably on autopilot, you know, getting back to their computer, doing the work and then going to sleep and sort of wake up repeat. So there's, it's a lot around wellness and a lot around what they can do, what they can do to sort of yeah manage that. So we at PwC, for example, we have access to, they gave us the Nike app for free so that we can exercise to keep us healthy. We have the Calm app as well they've given us to sort of keep our, be able to meditate and be able to have that, to have that available. Yeah, j- just little things like that, that we are then sort of seeing how it works within our own organisation and then able to further advise how. Expand and recommend. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, I mean, they, they are the key questions and also just around location so we do lots of work around location strategy that's usually based on where do i need to go to get the right talent like where is the right talent for the type of business that i have now it's going to be do we do we even need to worry about that is it more just looking at what technology do you have to make sure that you can actually communicate with people wherever Wherever they they are exactly it's been a a huge thing around digital upskilling as well so. Yeah, for sure. I've I've taught a lot of people how to zoom in the, uh, yeah. the last the last few months. Yeah. Amy, is that is that we were talking about Twitter a little bit? Is that what you're seeing sort of as a general thing? You know, there's a, a real shift towards this idea of accepting you know work from home or expanding where they're looking for. Well, are people are companies looking? I guess would be the the question more broadly. Yeah, that's a really good question, and we're finding out more answers to that every day. I'm finding out more answers every day as I continue to engage with the companies that I'm working with and just check in with them and see how things are going. And in a sensitive way, as you really don't know whether people that you contact are even in those jobs anymore. And that's something to really be mindful as well as you're navigating, you know, the new hiring processes and finding new opportunities with companies. 
But yeah, I've definitely seen a big slow or pause on hiring, um, unfortunately. And on the flip side, I'm seeing an increase in the amount of Australians um, or non-Aussies that are contacting me for jobs because they've either been laid off or they're just afraid of the situation and they want to know about other opportunities out there. But I have heard from a lot of the Australians I'm working with that although it's slowed, there are definitely companies out there that, that are still hiring. There's a lot of companies that are enabling this kind of globally distributed remote force. And it sounds like those companies are continuing to hire. And then a number of the startups that I work with, who I wouldn't have necessarily picked for ones to be, you know, companies still hiring, but they did just, you know, raise rounds of funding. They do have a pretty good run rate and they are in a position where they can continue to make those hires. But yeah, it is in a much more slow, measured way it does seem at the moment. Yeah, okay, because I'm seeing a sort of similar thing. I've actually seen a spike in the amount of people visiting America Josh and asking questions of me of, you know, I, I want to move over and I've still got this dream, you know, what, what do you think? What are you telling people in terms of a path forward? You were saying, you know, you, you're having a, an increase of people applying or looking for jobs and not well, sort of the inverse happening for the, the jobs being available. There are different opportunities, but it, they're getting less at the moment. They're, they're lower at the moment. What are you telling people as an outlook you know, are you giving a timeline? Are you saying, you know, just come back in six months? I, I have no idea or? Yeah. Yeah. So for a lot of Australians, one of the big challenges is the visa. So they either need a new visa or they're in Australia and they're waiting for embassies to open up. And so what I've, I've been doing is just actually hosting regular monthly or biweekly updates for the Aussie recruit community to keep people updated on what, what's going on with the visas because things are actually changing all the time. And from our session last night, it sounded like the consulates abroad may open as soon as June 8th. I mean, definitely kind of keep checking on the embassy websites for information. But that's what the information that we got last night from our immigration attorney. So my advice is to kind of just make sure that you're, you're checking these sites, that you're staying up to date with the information. It may be a little bit difficult if you're in Australia at the moment and you want to relocate to the US right now, even things like finding an apartment or getting a social security number. I mean, yeah. these challenges, they're challenges already. They're and possible they're almost, yeah, yeah. Way harder right now. So I definitely think that through and be recommending that people probably just wait, adopt a bit of a wait and see approach. But if you are in a scenario where you do have to move here, there, there are definitely kind of jobs still up. It's all about again expanding your your network and taking advantage of the, the remote situation everyone is remote already right now so there are scenarios where you could start working in australia or say new york for a san francisco based position or vice versa and play that remote card just make sure that you can work the same hours or that doesn't really affect your job but i think it's a really interesting play for australians right now since everyone is already working remote potentially, you know, through to the end of the year, as Renee mentioned with, with Twitter and, and possibly other companies soon to announce that. For sure. And how does that change your role as someone, you know, who would normally be sort of more directly engaging people on the ground? Do, do you see your role as a recruiter changing or it's just going to be a little bit different on physical location? That's about the only difference. Yeah, so my role has already massively changed in the, the number of companies that I've been working with have paused uh, on their hiring quite a bit. So I feel as though my role has kind of shifted to supporting the Australian community with the immigration challenges at the moment, which is the best thing that I can personally do in this scenario. And I think that my role is going to continue to evolve as we kind of see what's next and what the next steps are here. I would like to get those monthly um, community meetups back up and running. I thought they were really impactful, but I you know, can also see people putting off in-person events all the way through to next year. So yeah, yeah. I have to take a bit of a long-term approach here and just say, look, I'd like to get it back up and running. But in the meantime, it's going to be about creating virtual resources for people and doing my best to help connect Australians looking for jobs with companies that are hiring. And it's definitely, it's definitely going to be a challenge, but one I'm, I'm certainly up for. Awesome. Dan, is that about, you know, a similar message coming from you? You know, what's your projection for you know, New York City, the East Coast, what are you saying? What are you telling people? What are you planning? 
in, in terms of space or in terms of jobs or a little bit of both? Well, I, I guess in terms of space to start, so what are you sort of seeing? Do you have any projections for, you know, the city returning to normal? I realize it's a real crystal ball kind of moment, but we're, yeah. uh, we're pretending like we all know something more than everyone else. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's tough to say in terms of uh, specifics. What I would say is I, I think there, it's probably gonna reopen on a limited basis with some s s uh, serious restrictions. One of the biggest challenges I'm seeing in, in uh, commercial real estate, especially in office right now, is getting in and out, out of buildings. One of the most amazing things about New York is how dense and how dense we are and how tall we can build. One of the biggest problems with this current issue is that exactly. It's the um, logistics of getting people to their desks uh, safely Physically in and, out. and back is, very, is going to be very, very challenging under the restrictions that, that probably make a lot of sense for us right now. So, I, I mean, there's a number of things that, that commercial real estate is going to adopt going forward. I mean, at a minimum, it's increased sanitation and increased spacing. But for you to get to your desk, there's probably going to be a, a, a slot at some point in the morning and some point in the afternoon for when you are allowed to come in and leave. Um, yep. Because we're talking about, you know, tens of thousands of people in, in single single buildings, right? Yep. Because of that. Filing in so, one after another. <laughs> right. And I mean, we can all think about the way it was and how challenging that is going to be going forward. So I, I certainly think it's going to make more sense to continue to be remote, at least in some, some capacity for the foreseeable future. And any return to work is probably going to be on a limited basis. So you'll send some percentage of your workforce back to work on any given day. But the, the requirement to be in the office as it used to be, I don't see that it going back uh, anytime soon. Yeah. Renee, is that, uh, I mean, again, I'm taking the crystal ball from Dan and I'm handing it to you, but is that sort of a similar message that you're giving up is that, uh, you know, this will change things indefinitely. It will sort of change the workforce. Yeah, absolutely. I think this will change the workforce forever. Like, I don't think, I don't think indefinitely is the right word thinking that at some point we just don't know when there'll be a shift, but I think that's a good point. The world as we know it is probably is probably changing forever, and it could. I think in some ways it's going to be for the better. So I think that people are going to enjoy working remotely to an extent. It's going to give them more freedom. It's going to give them more flexibility. I think as things go back to normal, it might be that people who work remote don't necessarily want to be completely remote, but they also don't want to go into their office. So. Dan's business could come in handy yeah. <laughs> once things are back up and running. Dan, um, it's working. It's working. <laughs> but I think what Dan said as well about commercial businesses, I mean, we, years ago, we went from having our cubicles to having open work plan spaces. And now you can expect to see like the plastic go up again. It'll probably be perspex, so it's going to be see-through, but you can definitely expect <laughs> something like that, some sort of cubicle-like structure. But in terms of how things are going to change for different industries, I think it's going to be very interesting. I think for the consulting industry alone, mm. the consultant will no longer be a traveling profession because we've proved that we can be productive without having to fly every single week and without costing those, our clients, because I mean, our clients pay for our expenses they're going to be saving a lot of money because we're not going to have to be flying out there every week. Not to say we'd never fly and we'd never travel, but I don't think, I think that, yeah, our, our industry is going to shift completely. No, that's a really good point. I think that's uh, sort of highlights that it's changing for everyone as we all know, but those kind of industries where you would never have thought, you know, you think of consultants as people that are always on planes and absolutely they'd be the first ones to go back to, to that normal behavior. If, as you said, if you can prove that it, doesn't need it, then suddenly you uh, you can change an industry forever. Yeah. That's perfect. Look, about 6.31 p.m., the point of these is to be good and punchy and get through some topics and answer some questions. So we hope we've answered uh, some of the questions and, or all of the questions that were submitted in. And thank you to everyone who was watching and everyone who submitted questions. Thank you very much to Amy, Dan and Renee. That uh, was really helpful to hear some insight from all of you and all of your industries. I am going to be sending out some feedback forms to everyone who's watching. I really appreciate it if uh, you can give me, a, give me a bit of an idea on what you thought, what you took from it. If you have any questions for the panel, you can put that in there as well. If you have any questions for me, I, I'm more than happy to answer those. So everyone knows I also host Friday Night Drinks, uh, a cocktail hour and trivia hour on Friday nights from 5.30 Eastern until 6.30 Eastern. 
uh, and would love to have you all on board. But thank you again very much, Amy, Dan and Renee. I'll be sending some information for you three around to everyone as well and some links that they've mentioned throughout the topics, throughout the evening. So thanks again and thanks everyone for watching. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Hi, thank you.